Hello and welcome to this uh, video about fear and faith. My name is Lars Hoekland and I'm making a video series of five videos on the subject of fear and faith. Now the uh, first video was called fear of others and the second video was called fear of the future. Then the third video was called fear of ourselves and uh, this here is video number four which is called Fear That Comes True. Now, as I say, the theme is fear and faith. And uh, it is one thing to say, don't worry to somebody. But uh, what if the fear comes true? What if uh, what you are actually afraid of, anxious about, actually happens? How can we fight this fear? And uh, I'm going to look at that and uh, uh, I'm going to put some scripture verses in there that I hope will be of uh, help or benefit to someone. But uh, let me first start by telling a story. I have two examples to mention in this video. And the first one is about a lady. She was a wife she had a husband and two sons and um, uh, what happened was in 1973 uh, they were having a birthday party they were having a, a day of games and they were playing in the grass and everything seemed just rosy and fantastic and they were having lots of fun then suddenly a car came and went off the highway. I don't know why, but it came off and uh, crashed into this uh, little family. Now, the wife woke up with her face down in the grass and uh, she found that her husband and one of her sons had been killed instantly from the car. Now, there were bodies spread all over the place. Uh, this was a very frightening situation. And uh, uh, the result from this accident was that uh, she withdrew herself. She lived in the bedroom. She hid from the world and did not want to really uh, have anything to do with other people. Now, in 1984, her other son was in a motorcycle accident. <clears throat> now, he was uh, declared brain dead and was put on a ventilator or a breathing machine. And she had the hard choice to go and decide uh, to turn off that machine so that her son died. But he was brain dead and that was all her family gone. And she said to herself, what else can possibly happen? And um, believe it or not, she got married again. Although her life was uh, riddled with fear, uh, she managed to get married and have some more children. And uh, uh, she was very strict with her children. Uh, f at first, they were not allowed to go out in the street at all. Uh, after a while they were allowed to go out and she would say well where are you going who are you going with uh, when are you coming back and she wanted all the details before she she let them out and uh, in 2009 her, her son went out with some friends he just stuck his head in the door and said mom i'm going out with some friends and uh, what happened was that the, somebody uh, poured uh, fentanyl in his drink. Now, I can't remember because this story, of course, goes back a bit. And I forget sometimes what I've done yesterday. But uh, so I can't remember what happened. But uh, fentanyl is a very dangerous drug uh, and uh, can actually cause dead, death. But uh, most likely... Uh, just uh, breathing problems and, uh, you know, you you become unconscious and uh, it's not a drug that you want to play around with. But at this point, 
this woman said, what am I doing wrong? Am I a bad person? And people kept telling her, well, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And of course, that is biblical, but maybe not the advice that she needed in this time and place. So she was, she found herself asking herself, is there a God? And doubt kind of overwhelmed her. Well, the world is ruined because of sin. And unfortunately, tragedies like these happen. And it's hard for us to explain it. We're not able to explain it. And sometimes it's tempting for us to say, is God still God? Dark things happen in life and God knows that uh, we mourn and grieve. He, he knows what we're going through. Now I'm going to turn to the Bible and go, go to Psalm 121. And I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. That's, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Uh, God doesn't promise to remove our worries and our difficulties, but he does promise us joy if we're close to him. Now, joy comes from a deep trust in God. Joy comes from resting in him, uh, who is our father and our protector. He is the one that sustains our lives. He gives us every breath that we take. And sometimes we we got it all wrong. We think that uh, he owes us something, but it's we that owe him something. But let's turn to Matthew and chapter 11 then. Matthew chapter 11. And I will read what Jesus said in uh, verse 28 through 30. Now you might know these verses by heart, uh, or at least you have definitely heard them, but let me read them anyway. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and we and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes I realize that it doesn't feel like that, but uh, he says that we should come to him with our worries. We have a saviour who understands our sufferings, and it says so in Hebrews in chapter 4 and verse 16. In Hebrews 4:16, uh, it says, "Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in, to help in time of need." <clears throat> but he understands it because he he has a high priest in verse 15 that cannot be touched uh, with the feelings of our infirmities. Uh, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. And as you read in Hebrews, you see that uh, Jesus was tempted. And it says that uh, he understands when we go through temptations. Now back in Matthew in chapter 26. I will read verse 39. Verse 39 is talking about Jesus when he was in the garden praying in Gethsemane. Uh, before his uh, capture and uh, then his crucifixion. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So Jesus, in a sense, asked for the Father to remove his sufferings. But then, uh, you know, he, he added, uh, you know, not, not what I want, but what you want, Lord. And that is really what we need to say as well. And it's a long way to get to that place because uh, often we are very concerned 
about ourselves. Now, Jesus, he went willingly to the cross and uh, he suffered for us. Now, he, he knew that his sufferings had a purpose. His suffering made sinners free. His suffering provided salvation. Our sufferings also have a purpose, but sometimes it's harder to see that. Peter reminded the believers in Asia Minor of their purpose. I'll read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being more precious than of gold, that uh, perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So, what's he talking about here? It, it, all our sufferings are trials of our faith. This faith comes from God, not uh, from us. This is the reason that we can mourn and rejoice at the same time. Imagine that. God in his mercy gives us faith that his promises will sustain me. Do you think that uh, God will help you through your sufferings? It's an important question. He is strong enough uh, for our fear of the future. He is strong enough for the depression that you don't want anyone else to know about. He is strong enough for the sins that you hate uh, but still commit. He's strong enough for all of this. He's all powerful. He has faith and mercy for you and for me. We can rejoice in our suffering because we know that we are we have a living hope. We have an eternal glory to look forward to. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and always being with Jesus. Imagine that your dear ones that you have lost along the way, if they're saved and you're saved, you'll meet again in heaven. The trials give us hope. In Christ. Now, the um, letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 8, is a very big and rich chapter that uh, could be studied for ever and ever. But let me read first uh, verse uh, 38 and 39. Paul writes there, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I know we're told not to add anything to the Bible, but I wrote an amen after that. When fear becomes reality, remember Christ. He will not let you go through the storm on your own. This doesn't mean that there will not be storms. Storms in life come all the time. But he will go through it with you. Now, our good, loving God will lead us through the storm. His love will never cease. He is great in faithfulness, or should I say, his faithfulness is great. This must be our heart's cries when trials come, that God is faithful, Jesus loves us, and God is with us when we walk through the storm. I want to move over now to an other example, and this is also a woman but uh, her story is quite different and with a different outcome. She suffered illness 
in her younger days, uh, she got cancer. And as a result of that, she ended up uh, amputating one of her legs. Now, this was a strain on uh, her entire body. And uh, she was told by the doctors that she would never be able to conceive, never be able to be pregnant, to have a child. And this was uh, very heavy news for her because she, she wanted to become a mother. Now, she realized then that she might not have this joy of having a child of her own. And also she was afraid that no man uh, would accept her, physically or intimately. But she started dating, and uh, what do you know, she found a man that uh, really loved her, and they started talking about marriage. And she knew that she lacked something that he wanted. And she had like this clutching burden of how she viewed herself. Now, they did get married because this man really loved her. And four months after they got married, the miracle happened. She got pregnant. And they rejoiced and they were happy. And that lasted for one month. Five months after they got married, this woman was told that she ha had a critical heart failure. And she had the choice of either aborting her child or carrying to term and die. Now... She had never been so confused, so bitter, so afraid before in her life. She did not want to die. Who does, really? Um, uh, but she felt that she had to protect her unborn baby. God had protected her from all that the world had thrown at her so far. So, together they decided they wanted to keep the baby and they decided to trust God every day. And this baby in her womb grew and grew and started kicking. And in the end, she gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Another, that's, that's a miracle as well. Now, she saw a miracle that she was told could never happen. And she was ecstatic. But only two days after, suddenly she, she felt like she was getting suffocated. She felt she couldn't breathe. And it wasn't a panic attack. She was rushed to the hospital. And they, they said that uh, she, had, she was in heart failure. And it was like the rug was the rug was pulled out from under her feet. She felt everything just collapsing. And she prayed and her husband prayed and they, the, the church she went to prayed. And you know what, what the result was? The result was that the heart failure disappeared. The doctor said, the heart mended itself, and we don't know how or why. She chose to remember the Lord and trust in him. And her testimony at the end, I'll read that. She said, I have never arrived to a place in my life where I have seen too much to not trust in the Lord. What an amazing statement. Hope that we will say that at uh, in our lives that we can see how God is working in our lives. Now we want to trust in the Lord, but why are we not able to trust in the Lord? We can learn all about why we should trust in God from the story of Job. He had to trust in God because tragedies kept rolling over him. And he lost everything. And while I'm on to 
the story of Job. You know, he, he lost his children, not his wife, but he lost his children. And it says later that he, the Lord gave him more sons and daughters. But, you know, he still did not have his first. I mean, if, if I had two or three children and they died and I got three children after that, I would still be heartbroken, I suppose, for the first three I lost. But, you know, just saying that he, he lost everything. And that was a big thing. It was a big tragedy for him. And things just kept getting worse. And it seemed like it was never ending. Now I'm going to go to the book of Job. In chapter 42 and verse 2. Uh, Job is answering the Lord here and he says, in verse 2, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. So Job turned to the Lord and he didn't ignore his pain, but he remembered his king. He remembered his Lord. He remembered God. Job learned something that the apostle Paul wrote about. And then I'm going to go back to Romans chapter 8. This time I'm going to read verse 31 and 32. 31 and 32 says, What shall we they, uh, sorry, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not uh, with him also free freely give us all things. God's love is unfathomable. We cannot understand how rich and how big, how great God's love is. We cannot understand its depth and we cannot try to compare God's love with our love. It is totally different. And if we do that, we come up short. Now we have heard it earlier that we have to repeat it, but we have to repeat it time after time. God is love. Sometimes we doubt that, but the Bible says it. God is love. Even if your current situation makes you feel unloved, it is absolutely certain that if you are in Jesus, if you are in Christ, if you are born again, then you are in his love. It says that God loves everybody, and that is true, but you are in God's love when you accept Jesus, and his love just surrounds you. We should support each other uh, in trusting him and meditate on how we can trust him in him. Maybe how we can trust in him more. He is also patient, slow to anger, and rich in mercy and love. He knows our weaknesses, but we can trust on him. We can trust in him, I mean. And he um, encourages us to pray for help in our difficult times. That's what we saw in Hebrews 4. 16 that I actually thought was a different verse but uh, 416 let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need we should come boldly unto the throne of grace God is waiting for us there he's always standing there with open arms waiting for us he's always telling us to come to him um and um, i also like to go to one of David's psalms, Psalm number three. <clears throat> and I'm just going to read a few verses in there, then I'll, I'll just mention some, uh, some thoughts on that. Psalm chapter three, 
or should I say Psalm 3, verses 4 through 6 says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have set themselves against me round about. Now David's voice was often heard when he pleads God for help. But David, he trusted in God because he always lifted him up. He lifted his face up to look at him. And he calls to the Lord and the Lord answers him. He sleeps safely because the Lord uplifts him. And because he knows uh, God's faithfulness and character, he is not afraid. I wish we could be more like David. I truly do. Because we are weak and we have our faults. But uh, David did too. But he did have faith in God and he did trust in God and he called to God when he was in trouble, which was quite a few times. And he knew that God was waiting there to help him. He knew that God wanted to uh, protect him and lift him up and strengthen him and uh, uh, give him the wisdom he needed and just uh, be with him and bless him. Now, there's a lot in the Psalms uh, that we can reflect on about the character of God and why we can trust in him. Uh, it's not um, It's not a single trial but well, we cannot look back and see God's faithfulness. God has been faithful in my life and I'm sure that he's been faithful in yours. Things happen, but God doesn't desert us. He's always there for us and he's available for us unless we turn our back to him. Now, we should also remember how God has been faithful to us. He has never let us down. It is impossible for him to let us down. We can trust God because he is God. It's as simple as that. God is God. We can also trust in God because he is faithful. His faithfulness has shown that he is faithful. If anyone is not faithful, then it's us. Do you lie on your bed? worrying about a particular circumstance or situation? What keeps you awake at night? Ask yourself this question. So, do you trust God? And if you don't trust God, ask, can you trust him? That is a big question. Can you trust in God? Now remember, all the times God has been faithful to you. Because he is faithful. He will not let you down. Now. And he has sent you Jesus. To save you. And he has sent you the Holy Spirit. To live inside you. And we do have. What we need. To go through the storms. The Lord hears our cries and knows our pain. And having said that, I've come to the end of this video. I will leave you with uh, three words. Well, I'll have something to say after that. But uh, uh, the, my conclusion is prayer, support and love. Prayer, support and love. If we get that into our system, 
We pray to God, we support each other and we love each other. Then we have more than just the Lord to help us through the storms, but we have support from each other. Now, if you want to watch the other videos, they are available on uh, YouTube. You can just uh, use the title for this uh, video and just change the number at the end and you should be able to find it. If not, you can go to my uh, new video blog that I'm trying to build up uh, slowly because uh, I've got lots of Norwegian videos, but uh, this is... Uh, I'm just starting now with the English videos. I do apologize for uh, my killing off the English language in my videos, but uh, there you go. I'm a Norwegian, can't help it. But uh, if you go to revlast.wordpress.com, then you can find all the English videos I have posted so far. And there will be more coming, I'm hoping at least one per week but uh, you can also find it on youtube so i hope that uh, these words were a blessing to you or a help to you um, and uh, soon i'll uh, hopefully be back next week with uh, video number five in this series god be with you